Let's go. And you will say, oh. It's weekend and a beautiful one for that matter. Saturday, the ninth day of April 2022. And this is your lab boy today coming to you. And I'm reminded by the topic of your lab boy today. As a little child playing with clay, with mud, with plasticine, and then perhaps at a point even in my a semi-adult life as an undergraduate in the university building models as a student of architecture and you know just molding things the way i felt like and designing them according to the inspiration that i received now for your live boy today we are discussing the potter and the clay and we'll be taking a scripture reading from the prophet jeremiah's writing that's where we still are, and we're now in the 18th chapter, and we'll be reading from the very first verse. If you're set, let's go quickly. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as, as this potter has done? Says the Lord, behold, like the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken tongues from its evil, I will repent of the evil that I intended to do it. And if at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will repent of the good which I had intended to do it. Now therefore... Say to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Return everyone from his evil way and amend your way and your doings. But they say, That is in vain. We will follow our own plans and we will act everyone according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You've been told in all the few past days that we've been reading from the book of Prophet Jeremiah, the situation in which he was in, being one of the few lonely voices, but certainly perhaps the most prominent that was against evil in the land of Judah just before the taking away into Babylon. And because he knew that, yes, in spite of the fact that God took them from the land of Egypt and took them through the wilderness and took them to the land flowing with milk and honey according to the promise that he gave to their fathers and said he will be their God and that they will be his people. But everything was conditional. It will be that they will be 
his people if they did his will and he would only be their God if they did his will. And like a little child can keep an ant in a little box and decide what to do with the ant, allow the ant to get out of the box and bring it back into the box, uh, let the ant dance around within the box, or in fact kill the ant. So are we in the hands of God. Just like the potter would also mold the clay into anything, could make, mold it first into the form of a beast and then could later mold it into the form of a man. Have you forgotten the story of Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible? He was molded originally in the form of a man, become a king, didn't do the will of the Lord, became a beast and was restored back to man. Have you forgotten the story of the land of Nineveh that God had determined in his heart, in his heart that he was going to destroy Nineveh? But he sent a prophet there, Jonah, and Jonah spoke the word of the Lord to the people and the people changed from their evil ways. And on account of the people changing from their evil ways, God also changed his mind and then the land of Nineveh was saved. Have you forgotten the story of King Hezekiah? That King Hezekiah was dead in court because God had determined that he was going to die. And he only sent a prophet to him to let him know that he had only a few days more if he put his house in order that he was taking him home. And Hezekiah went to God to pray and did the will of the Lord. Perhaps one of the best kings that ever lived in the land of Israel. And then he was able to live another 11 or 15 years, a number of years. Although people will tell you, yeah, another 15 years, but people will tell you that it was between the 11th and 12th year of that reign that he now had a son, Manasseh, who perhaps turned out to be the, or one of the very worst kings that Israel ever had. But what we are saying is this, that we are like clay in the hands of the Lord. And therefore, for us to enjoy the best of molding, we must be ready to yield to him. Is there anything that the Lord is telling you to do right now as a person? Is there anything that the Lord is telling your community, your church, your nation, and perhaps you are one of the messengers, you need to get that message across and you need to lead by example? Then you better yield to the will of the Lord because the same Lord that allows you to live today can take you away tomorrow. All the glory should return back to him. There was a king, Herod, that did not return all the glory back to God because they said, oh, his voice sounded, sounded like that of the gods and he was a great orator. He was consumed by worms almost immediately. And there was a man also in the scriptures who said, I now have all the riches and I can live the way. And God told him that his soul shall be taken away from him that night. And it was taken away. And there was a, 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 a rogue that was to be crucified with Jesus Christ. And he repented. And that same, same hour, ah, God, I mean, it was, the decision was taken that, okay, you'll be with me in eternity tonight. These are all situations that you need to know that God is always able to remold anything concerning you. So if there's anything that is troubling you right now, take it to the Lord. The Lord is able to remold that situation. And the Lord will do it for you, I pray in Jesus' name. So, for you, you are not yet known of that Lord or you do not yet know that Lord then let me invite you so that you can also be one of us that are in the Lord, that as clay in the hands of that potter, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we will get a great molding for positive things. So I want to invite you now to give your life to Christ. If you are set for that experience, just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know now that I'm also like clay in your hands. Therefore, I pray that you remold me from today as I declare that I have renounced all my sins. Forgive me, Lord. Let me be one with you from today, I pray in Jesus' name. So if you said that prayer, welcome into the kingdom. Welcome into the kingdom where we are sure that we'll be molded in the hands of the potter for positive and great things. Therefore, find the Bible-believing church around you. I always say, if you find an Anglican church, fantastic place for you to be. And if you happen to be in Oshobo, naturally the best place for you to be is the Anglican church or the extension where as clay in the hands of the potter, I am sure that we have been molded to do great and positive things. Together now, all of us, let's say this prayer. I say, Dear Lord, I submit to you as a clay to the potter today. Please mold me 
and use me for your good and for your will, I pray in Jesus' name. So go out today, recognize that you are just clay in the hands of the potter. Live your life like that and it will be well with you. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful. I call you good.